Hello friends, in this video, let us understand about the working principle of your three-phase induction motor. So, any electrical motor is defined as an electromechanical device which converts the energy in electrical domain to the mechanical domain. So, among the three-phase AC operations, your three-phase induction motors are widely used in our industries because almost 80% of the mechanical power used by the industries are being supplied by your three phase induction motors so the various reasons for being using this three phase induction motors in our industries are because of their simple and rug type of construction simple and rug type of construction and the other reason is here you do not need any external prime mover to start your induction motor that means they are self starting motors they are self starting motors they have good operating characteristics and they are also of low cost and we are not employing or we are not using any type of commutators in our induction motor so that reduces the sparking in our brushes so absence of commutators and you can also say for the slip ring induction motors we can vary the speed of our induction motor by employing external resistance through the brushes and slip rings so good you can say good speed regulation so because of these various reasons we are widely using this three phase induction motors in our industries now let us go into the working principle of this three phase induction motor so here mainly we are deploying two laws one is faraday's faraday's electromagnetic in law that is faraday's electromagnetic induction law and the other law is lenz law and you can also if you want to determine the direction of current that is flowing in the rotor conductors you can also use fleming's left hand rule so before going into the greater details of the working principle of three phase induction motor let us understand the very basic constructional details of your three phase induction motor so we know that any rotating electrical machine has mainly two parts if i say the first part is stator and the second part is rotor so the stator is a stationary part of your motor so here again the stator has three parts so one is stator frame other is stator core and other is stator windings so the stator frame is the outermost cover of your motor so here this is your stator frame it provides support to the stator core and winding in the stator part and it also provides protection and mechanical strength to all the inner parts of your three phase induction motor so this is about your frame and now coming to the stator core your stator core carries alternating flux so here your flux will be flowing like this and uh, this is your stator frame and inside the uh, periphery of your stator frame you are having some slots these are the slots slots where your windings are wound here three phase windings are wound here so the slots are inside the periphery of your stator frame and the stator core carries your alternating flux so now coming to the stator winding your stator winding employs the three phase windings one is r y and b that is three phase the three phase windings r y and b so your stator winding carries this three phase windings and the three phase windings can be either delta or star connected so generally for your squirrel case type of induction motor we are going for star delta type of starters so depending on the type of starter we are using in that mode we connect our stator windings so for squirrel case type of induction motor as we are going for 
star delta starters that is star delta starters hence the three phase winding should be delta connected in squirrel cage type of induction motor and for slip ring type of induction motor the starting can be done by inserting resistances so this is about your stator part and here the stator core is of laminated type so i want to discuss this the stator core is of laminated type the laminations are done to reduce the eddy current losses so eddy current are the circulating currents due to the leakage flux flowing in the stator core and the laminations are made by structures known as they are stampings so the thickness of thickness of the stampings can be 0.4 to 0.5 mm and the stampings are stamped together to form your stator core and the stamping material here we are using cold rolled silicone cold rolled green oriented silicone steel so we are using this to reduce our hysteresis losses so we are laminating to reduce the eddy current losses and we are using the material crjo silicon steel to reduce the hysteresis losses and we have discussed the windings there are three phase windings being carried in a stator winding part now coming to the rotor your rotor can be further classified into two types so if i say the first type is or you can say a uh, squirrel case type of rotor squirrel case type of rotor and the second is wound rotor or slip ring rotor so now again based on this type of rotor we are having two types of induction motors one is squirrel case type of induction motor and the wound type or slip ring type of induction motor so the stator for both these type of rotor remains same the stator part is same but the rotor part depending on the rotor part the name of the motor is going to change either it is squirrel cage or wound rotor in squirrel cage the rotor conductors can be aluminum brass or copper and they are permanently short circuited through end rings and here the wound rotor the rotor windings are either closed by external resistances external resistances to be used for closing your wound rotor windings so here this is your stator frame and the inner periphery here this part is your stator core sorry this part this part is your stator core and here you see the poles projecting poles this is one pole two pole this is other pole other pole and similarly you are having again r y b faces and the three phase windings can be either star or delta connected and similarly your rotor also can be a star connected type because the star connected why we are using star connected we shall discuss the detail of this and the other part can be a shaft the shaft is used for transmitting the torque to the load uh, and the shaft can be made of steel so here you are having the other part as shaft and uh, for supporting the rotation of your three phase induction motor we are also employing bearings and uh, apart from this we can use cooling fans so because our motors are getting overheated here and uh, we can also use external terminal box to get connection to this motor so we have discussed the constructional details now coming to the working principle of your three phase induction motor so when a balanced three phase supply is provided to the three phase windings of your stator in your three phase induction motor then a rotating magnetic field is produced so the concept behind the rotating magnetic field is one you need a balanced phase supply balanced phase supply and the other factor you need for rotating magnetic field is the spatial distribution of your windings
So, if the supply being provided to the three windings are displaced equally in time domain, they are displaced equally in time domain of same magnitude and if your windings are also displaced equally in space domain, then a rotating magnetic field is produced. So, here generally the, the windings are 120 degrees apart in space, 120 degrees apart in space from each other that is R is if you are having your windings like this. If I say R, Y and B, the angle between two windings, any two windings are 120 degrees. That is equal displacement of the windings is seen here and uh, their balance su phase supply means the currents are displaced equally in time domain of same magnitude. So, when that balance supply is provided to the balance winding then a RMF is seen. Then a rotating magnetic field appears in your stator core. Now, in squirrel case type of induction motor, the rotor bars are short circuited with the help of end rings and in wound rod type of induction motor, the rotor windings are either closed by exter using your external resistance through slip rings and brushes. So, now according to the Faraday's law, what we know is an EMF is induced whenever there is a rate of change of flux linkage in the circuit. So, we know that E is equal to minus d phi by dt. So, as the rotor conductors are short circuited and there is a revolving flux and that flux is revolving at a speed known as your synchronous speed. Now, when this rotating magnetic field sweeps over your rotor conductors and EMF is induced in your rotor conductors because there is a rate of change in flux across your rotor conductors and as we know the rotor conductors at standstill position they are stationary. So, now when the rotating magnetic field sweeps over your stationary rotor conductors and EMF is induced in your rotor conductors and as we know in squirrel case type of motor the uh, rotor windings are short circuited with the help of end rings and for wound type rotor, wound type rotor they are short circuit, they are closed through your external resistance. Now, as the rotor windings are short circuited, a current starts flowing in your rotor winding and this current introduces its own flux known as rotor flux. Now, this rotor flux tries to catch your rotating magnetic field and rotates in the same direction of your RMF direction. So, because from Lenz law, we know that the effect always opposes the cause. So, the cause is the relative speed between the rotor flux and the stator flux. So, now the rotor rotates in the same direction of the rotor flux rotates in the same direction of stator flux to catch the synchronous speed. Now, once it catches the synchronous speed, then what happens is there is no EMF induced in your rotor windings that means no current that means no torque generated in your three phase induction motor. Now, when this rotor flux interacts with your stator flux, then a mechanical force is being exerted on your rotor and the rotor starts rotating. But as uh, when the rotor flux reaches the synchronous speed, there is no relative speed and no EMF, no torque, nothing. But what happens is the rotor decelerates when it reaches the speed of synchronous speed. Now, once the rotor starting decelerates, again the relative speed is being developed between your rotor flux and the stator flux. Now, the direction of the rotor flux is in the same direction of stator flux is to reduce the cause. That means the effect is the rotor flux and the cause is the relative speed. So, Lenz law is being observed here and if you want to 
experience the direction of force being held on your rotor conductor it is given by your Fleming's left hand rule now if I say I am having a magnet here this is north pole and if I say other magnet this is south pole and if I am placing a current carrying conductor and the current is being carried in this direction and if I say this is my uniform magnetic field flowing from north to south then according to Fleming's left hand rule if I stretch my index finger thumb finger and middle finger where my index finger represents the direction of force being experienced with the conductor where the thumb finger sorry the thumb finger is the force being experienced with the conductor the index finger is the direction of magnetic field and the middle finger is the direction of current so if i stretch my hand and if i represent like this this is my magnetic field flowing in this direction and this is my current which is coming in this direction then the force being experienced by the conductor is given by your thumb finger this is in the upper direction so here is your current here is your magnetic field and the force being experienced will be perpendicular to both of your magnetic field and the direction of current so this is your force and the best way to remember is your the rule is fbi f for force b for magnetic field i for the direction of current now we know that when the rotor flux reaches the synchronous speed there is no relative speed and uh, as a, as a result the rotor decelerates and uh, when the rotor decelerates again we can see there is a relative speed between the rotor flux and the state of flux so as a result the induction motor always rotate below your synchronous speed it never reaches this synchronous speed and always rotates below the synchronous speed and the induction motor is also known as asynchronous motor because it rotates at a speed other than synchronous speed or you can say that is less than synchronous speed so here if you see the construction we have seen the frame we have seen the status slots here are your windings windings on your status slots now when three phase supply is provided to your three phase windings for this this is your r phase winding this is y phase winding and this is b phase winding and if i supply my three phase current to your three phase windings then as the three phase currents are balanced phase currents and the windings are also spatially distributed that is 120 degrees apart in space then a rotating magnetic field is produced so the balance phase supply here it means the currents ir iy ib are equally displaced that is the phase displacement between them is same they are equally displaced in time domain of the same magnitude then they are said to be balanced phase supply and if the windings are spatially distributed that is they are equally distributed in space domain that is uh, whatever the angle you are having so if i say in three phase windings the 120 degrees is the space angle between two windings so as they are having the equal space displaced windings the displacement angle is same between every winding therefore as we are having spatial distributed winding and the balanced phase supply a rotating magnetic flux is developed so this is applied to any number of phases suppose if you if you take your single phase induction motor where we are having only one winding that is the main winding and for this what we are developing is to produce a rotating magnetic field we are providing with a auxiliary winding thereby we can have the two windings are equally displaced in space and if i provide my balanced two phase supply that is the currents are equally displaced in time domain then a rotating magnetic flux is produced and this sweeps over your rotor conductors so briefly summarizing the working principle what is happening is when a balanced three phase supply is provided to a balanced three phase windings then a rmf is produced and this rotating magnetic field sweeps over your rotor conductors and uh, 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 from Faraday's electromagnetic induction law an EMF is induced in your rotor conductors and as the rotor conductors are short circuited in squirrel case with the help of end rings and they are short circuited in bound rotor induction motor with the slip rings or you can either 
close the worn type rotor circuit with the help of external resistance through slippering and brushes and as they are short circuited a current starts flowing into your rotor conductors and this current develops a flux known as rotor flux. This rotor flux interacts with your RMF that is a rotating magnetic field or you can say stator flux and as a result electromagnetic force is being exerted in your rotor and thereby the torque develops which is also known as starting torque and hence your motor starts rotating. So if you see the principle here it is nothing but the electromagnetic induction. So if you assume this the stator winding as a primary winding of a transformer and the rotor winding as a secondary winding of the transformer and they are short circuited then I can say the three phase induction motor is nothing but a transformer with the secondary that is a rotating transformer with the secondary short circuited. So this is all about the working principle of your three phase induction motor. I hope you understood well. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.